Okay, first thing I do is add another menu down the bottom. I right-clicked on the panel down there, in case you're confused. And you drag this down. These are all things you can add to the panel. That's the one I tend to add. Now we put a few launchers onto the desktop. See, we're going into here all the time. Generally turn off the screen server. I should have unticked that activate screen server box as well, but I get forgetful in my old age. Unfortunately, that's unreadable, so with that's with the standard theme, so we'll have to change the theme. I've just clicked on that, it takes a few seconds to come through. Now that should make it readable. Yes, I can read all of that now, so let's carry on. That's my, the 74 gig is my internal hard drive on the laptop. And this SDB is an external USB drive I got plugged into it. So let's create, it's got XP on it already in a 25 gig partition, so now I'm Want to create the partitions for Linux and a data partition. I never use a separate home partition. I put everything into a a data partition, so all my o operating systems can use it, including Windows. I just find it works better. This is a mistake what I'm doing now because you're only allowed four primary partitions. Well, XP or Windows, any Windows insists on being installed into a primary partition. But with Linux, it doesn't matter. You can use what they call an extended partition. And you can put more than four partitions up then. But it'll give you an idea of what I'm setting up. And now we find my mistake. So I want a data partition. But it says I'm not allowed, so I got to start again doing it properly. But it's all good practice, isn't it? This is the way I set up my hard drives. That's the undo button. Now we start again, but we start with an extended partition, change that box there. 
Oh, I can add as many partitions as I want. I'm going to do another video of tweaking the GNOME desktop and also installing the XFCE desktop. And that's why I've used two separate partitions here. Now we can add a data partition. So if I make it NTFS, that means Windows can read it as well. Here's a 500 gig drive, and I don't know, I've got into the habit of calling that data drive 500 data, so I just carry on, regardless of the size of the hard drive. And that SDB6 is where we're going to be installing Solus to the first time. So that will be in the next video part. OK, this is installing. You've got to select your language. The default is the UK, which I'm quite happy with. going into SDB and it's SDB 6 we want to go in and that screen doesn't display the label of the partition which is a great shame make life a lot easier if it did or clearer Uh, whatever username you want, I tend to stick with user. This one will be using the known desktop, so. Then you've got to select where you want the grub to install, so I want it on the B drive. And it takes a lot longer than that, I can assure you, but not that bad. So when it installed into that partition, it deleted the label I put on it, so now I want to put the label back. Just makes life a lot easier when there's a label on the drives. Wait for it to finish. That's that one done. Now we've got a reboot, I think. Uh, 
and we're into grub so it's saying it okay don't know what that's all about after i say i'm supposed to do something this is the first run wizard that's the firewall and it's turned off if you want to turn it off you've got to unlock it and undo it that's telling me there's a driver I should use. I don't normally use these at all, funny enough. And everything just runs. But I'll install it just to show you. Never change anything there. Oh, there's a donate button. I mean, Ike would very much appreciate a small donation if you find it worthwhile. And that's it. First run wizard done. Just reboot it. Bye.